Hello guys, hi guys, you hope you guys are feeling good. Welcome back to the showroom. Now this year we'll keep playing real simple. So we're gonna be checking out Charlie Kick debating with a college student, and this argument really got heated. Like it's so heated and so educative at the same time. So no further ado, let's just bounce and let's check this out. Let's go. Hey Charlie, um I was told to keep it short, so I will. Okay. Um so you touched on LGBTQ rights a lot. You've talked about, you know trans bathrooms, you getting banned from Twitter, very, you know, awful. Um, but I'm wondering if I can get a straight answer, yes or no, do you think the acceptance of queer people in society is a good thing? Well, define acceptance and define queer, because when I grew up, that was like a slander. So I don't know, that's like a thing now. Uh, queer, being lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Um, and um, what was the other word you asked What do you me mean define? acceptance? What, what do you mean? Acceptance being that, you know, society, you know, you know, accepts that, doesn't try to change that, doesn't try to, um, say that it's not a social, like it's not a good thing for you to be gay. It's not a good thing for you to be trans, and um, and you know, in our institutions, also just get, offering them resources to, um, you know, just come to terms with their sexuality, not feel bad about it. Basically, by acceptance, I generally mean society shouldn't make people feel bad about who they are. So, do you agree with that? No, no. I mean, we should feel bad about all sorts of things. So, I mean, <laughs> definitely yeah, I, I get the mic back up. But I mean, I'll just ask you a very simple question, and this will tell: What is a woman? A woman is someone who identifies as a woman. Got it. So, um, so can, so do you think a definition of someone be able to become pregnant would be a woman? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? So if someone can become pregnant, would that person be defined as a woman? Depends on if they identify as a woman. Right. So, okay. What? We're now getting to the root of the issue. So do you believe that truth is objective or subjective? Do you believe in absolute truth? Sure. Okay, so if you believe in absolute truth, shouldn't we have absolute terms of what a infant bearing or infant birthing person is, otherwise known as a woman? No. Okay, so let me ask you, let me ask you this a different way, I suppose. So if anyone can identify at anything at any time, correct? Okay. Anyone can identify. As, as a woman or a man, you can just choose at any time, right? Gender? Well, sure. gender identity isn't switching genders all the time. It just depends, like... But that's your position, right? That's fair to say? That you could change your gender? My position is that you should accept people's gender identity and you shouldn't right, okay, try to shame fine. them out. So of it. let me ask you, should we should we accept people that think they're younger than they actually are? <laughs> because that that is that's that's a mental condition where people say, I identify as an eight year old, but they're really fifty. Should we accept someone be able to say they're younger? No, but I think that's a very false equivalence. Why is it a false equivalence? Because there's scientific research supporting that gender identity is something that is... Oh, you know, my God. Like, um, there's scientific research that supports people and says that if you identify as a certain gender, then that is, like, your gender. There's this paper on Scientific American that I found very interesting that said, like, you know, it has to do with... Um, like your brain formation in the womb where gender identity forms, but it's different from sex. That's very different from a, in a disorder where you say, I'm not actually uh, my age. Cause well, hold on. You just, you just agreed with me. You said it's a brain formation issue. It's a brain formation. I didn't say it was a disorder. Well, so you don't think transgenderism is a disorder? No. What is gender dysphoria? Gender dysphoria is when you're very uncomfortable with your, um, with your own body and that usually relates to gender and that can usually be treated if you choose a transition to... Right, so it's a mental condition, right? That's, well, gender dysphoria is, but transgenderism okay. is not. What's the difference? The difference between gender dysphoria and, tran and transgenderism? Yes. Trans being transgender means that you don't identify with the gender you're born with. Gender dysphoria means you're uncomfortable with your body. So there are two different things. No, there is, so <laughs> you cannot be quote unquote transgender without suffering from gender dysphoria. So let me ask you one more question. So you believe that we can dictate pronouns. Can I choose my adjectives? Can I decide to be like super rich? Or like, can someone like, can I decide to be small? Like, is there anything objective that we have to actually admit? Or can you just change anything at any time? I think people should have the right to determine their pronouns. And I don't think- no, how about adjectives? I, I don't think people actually do that, so I don't know why that's something you're- Well, of course, like if someone says, I declare I'm rich, it's no longer than saying, I'm declare I'm a man. Your Damn. chromosomes aren't that way. You don't get to choose you what don't get your to reality choose. is, do you? You, gender identity is reality. Gen okay, so anyone could be anything. Let me ask, how about species reality? Can I change my species? No. Why? There's people that identify as cats and dogs all the time. It's a serious mental condition. It is. It's treated all the time. Tens of thousands of cases every single year. So, so basically, 
if you believe in absolute truth, which you say you do, why wouldn't you believe in absolute truth when it comes to chromosomal structure? Because gender and chromosomal sex are two different things. That's right, according to your opinion. Got it. Okay, so, but now, that, that's now you want actually. to impose that opinion on the rest of society, right? You can have whatever opinion you want. Here's our position. That opinion should now not apply to all of a sudden saying that men and women's sports should be conflated. Final question. Did you find a moral problem with the University of Pennsylvania swimmer changing from a man to a woman and winning the NCAA championship, defeating other women? Well, I'm not familiar, but I'm pretty sure that the NCAA has some rules that makes it so people who transition have, like, you know, kind of a competitive fair thing. So I haven't done not much Number, research what? into those rules, but yeah, okay. usually so, they make it Let me it catch so you up to speed. 462nd best male swimmer, best female swimmer, NCAA champion. Do you see a problem with that? Are you, are you suggesting that she, that she transitioned to a woman to get better at swimming? Of course. And, and we shouldn't allow why that to you, happen. Why because would you transition yourself just to become better at a sport? Who because does that? you're a narcissist. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you're a tr it's, like, it's like saying, why would anyone steal anything? Why would anyone cut in line? People do bad things. It's not up to us as society to accommodate the rules for mm -hmm. your impulses to go do bad things. Last question. Do you think there's differences between men and women? Was this the actual last question? Yeah, last, last. I'm just <laughs> I'm curious. No, I'm curious because I, I, I can't believe you're paying for this. It's like so interesting. Well, there are actual differences between men and women, yes, in terms of, you know, chromosomes, as you mentioned. So, yeah, sure. Okay, so therefore we agree that men and women have differences. We should define society around those differences. And one of those differences is that women are, they have lower testosterone levels, and they could be easily exploited by men, which is what happens far too often, and it's incumbent on men who have higher testosterone levels, who are physically stronger per, to protect women against the exploitation of men who think they are women. That's a moral question and a moral claim. Mm. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. Wow. This is so solid. I feel like the definition between a man and a woman is my eyes have just been open with, with this um debate between um Charles Kirk and the students. Like he just sounded like a narcissist, like seriously sounded like a narcissist. And I love the way Charles Kirk just answered it. Why would a man want to go go change to a woman to go play women's sports and win them at the same time? Why? Like, it's so crazy. And why would even a woman, because of how she feels, okay, she's feeling like a man, so she want to go transform into a woman, into a man. Like, why? It, the whole gender dysphoria and whole issue about genderism is just being so lame. It's becoming too lame and it's, it's causing a problem, you know? It's causing a serious problem because they don't want the society to address it. And at the same time, they feel bad when the society addresses that situation where you be like, oh, being um, changing from a man to a woman out of um, pronouns and all this shit. Like, they feel like the society is going to bad talk them at that. And at the same time, they are feeling bad, you know? So it's just so mind blowing. And I love the way Charles Kek answered this. He totally just gave me like the best, best, best answer about this whole genderism and whole gender problems. Like, you know, I just pray the world we are we safe out there. Anyways, <laughs> let me know what you think about this video. Give um give the like, give the thumbs up, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and give me your own opinion. I'll be so happy to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep watching and watch us for more. Peace and God bless you.